First up, with more and more sports suspending seasons and canceling tournaments, sports fans everywhere are looking for something to fill the void. And esports may be just the thing, according to adweek.com. Here's what makes them similar. Since playing video games and watching others play doesn't require one to be in close proximity with others, it's quite possible that esports will become a big interest for teenagers stuck at home. Sure, watching shows or making TikToks may also become more important, but like sports, esports aren't scripted, don't have predetermined outcomes, and are built around players' personalities. So they may be more enticing for teenagers who are hoping to watch the March Madness drama unfold or who closely follow their favorite NBA stars. If your teens are suddenly asking to play more games or spend more time on Twitch, Mixer, or even YouTube and TikTok, this could be why. Side note, hashtag esports is a rapidly growing tag on TikTok. Next, pandemic pressure. If you're like us, you've probably seen lots of reminders that this time in quarantine is a gift, a chance to finally do all the things. As well-intentioned as they are, they can also cause a lot of anxiety and dread. Here's why it's misguided. Reminding ourselves and our kids not to waste all of our time on social media or binge-watching shows we're not even half interested in is admirable. But saying that now our wildest goals and dreams can be realized because we have a month off is pressure. No matter what a tweet says, you cannot write an entire book in a month. So if you or your teens are feeling like you must accomplish something epic to prove you're not a failure, remember that this type of advice gets us focusing on the wrong thing, ourselves. As a wonderful post from Rooted Ministry reminds us, utilizing the time to accomplish something is not the same as redeeming it. Topic number three, digital vigilance. With everyone turning to the internet during this time of social distancing, our kids could be more at risk for targeting by online predators. Perhaps even more than usual, if that's even possible, our digital native kids will be seeking to connect with others via social media, dating apps for older kids, and video games. Many of them will be more likely to talk to strangers in hopes of staving off boredom and loneliness, which is the perfect opportunity for predators to swoop in. We don't remind you of this to worry you, but to remind you to be vigilant and prepared, always talking with your kids about their online activity and how to know whom to trust. It's also important to enable restrictions on their devices so they can't download apps without your permission. Check out our parent guides to iOS, Android, and internet filtering and monitoring at access.org for more information. A quick side note, we know that sometimes it's hard to remember what people even did before the internet and streaming, let alone during times of isolation when they had so much time on their hands. So we brainstormed and came up with 14 things to do with teens if you're quarantined. You can find a link in the show notes. And here's our final culture topic of the week, coping with corona anxiety. It's not easy being Gen Z. For a generation that is almost always online and prone to anxiety or depression, a global pandemic can be debilitating. A sudden crisis like COVID-19 can overload their maturing emotional operating system, leading our children into bouts of hysteria. Unfortunately, things look like they will get much worse before they get better. So as a family, what can you do to reduce the noise leading your kids to new levels of stress and angst? In addition to social distancing, here are six practical things you can do right now to cope with this ongoing crisis. Number one, limit exposure. If your teen is glued to social media for the latest breaking alerts, give them a limit for how much time they can spend online each day during the crisis. Use features like Apple Screen Time or Android's digital well-being for this. Number two, check the source. If you or your child are only getting news from Twitter, Facebook, or even your favorite news outlet, find other credible sources that tend to be less biased, like the Centers for Disease Control or World Health Organization. Number three, go outside. Simply taking a walk in the woods can alleviate stress by connecting us with God's good creation. Notice the trees and the buttercups. Are you not cared for more than these? As environmentalist John Muir wrote, everybody needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in, where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul. Number four, just read. Nothing invites your children out of their own mood or self-centered story and into a larger world like a great book. Encourage them to read The Diary of Anne Frank or Corey Ten Boom's The Hiding Place to help them realize others have suffered far more than they are currently suffering. Number five, build remote face-to-face community. Schedule a video chat so your kids can stay connected with their buddies using FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, or similar apps. And number six, pray. Spend 10 minutes each morning or evening praying as a family. To help guide your time, check out the Daily Office app for daily scripture and prayers to pray together. Thanks for listening to The Culture Translator. This is the audio version of our weekly email newsletter. To get our free newsletter, sign up at access.org slash CT. For other resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes. We are here to help you have meaningful conversations with Gen Z.